I'm trying to have a conversation that's not being had. And I'm really sorry that these conversations are being had by a comedian. I wish too that it was a religious leader of some kind having this conversation or somebody's politician talking about this stuff. I watched the special last night and then I woke up this morning and I saw you were trending and I'm sure you knew all that would happen. I, the first thing that I must ask you is pretty, pretty obvious, but why did you call it W W three? I write these hour long sets an hour. I mean, a, a year before they're going to be filmed. So the risk on my side of things is I have to write a conversation and then have this conversation still be true, valid, current, and relevant nine and a half months after I originally write it. Um, That means I have to know that World War III is coming in order to trademark the name and to write a special called that and have in mind to have these conversations. Um, When you do things like that, there's a chance that that you're gonna be successful and a chance that it won't connect. There's a lot of different variables at play, Um, but um, the titles of the specials are based upon the feeling attached to them. So in Pimp Chronicles, there aren't any pimp jokes or any lady of the evening jokes or any jokes about um, prostitution. It's just, you are chronicling something. So World War III is because that was the time that it was going to happen. It was destined to happen. It says it in everybody's religious books. It um, says it everywhere that it could say it. And time is circular. So we can read what happened and what led up to World War I enough to know that between World War I and World War II, we know exactly what environments and settings have to be involved in the world for one of these things to kick off. And that's just where we are. Comedically, it means it's a um, crossroad period. Um, and personally, for all of us with COVID and the pandemic, it meant that the world was going through some things right now that we couldn't really look through history and see something like this happening. So anytime something new is coming, this is a critical part of evolution and you have to document those. Comedically, I do those with comedy specials and yeah, that's the 12th one. It is, congratulations, by the way. I, th- I think it is, I read, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's the second one for Netflix. It's your 12th one, but the second one for Netflix. Is that accurate? Okay, so how it works <laughs> is for the first 10 specials, I funded the specials, wrote the specials, paid for the specials to be shot and directed directed and produced and edited and I own all of them. Um, This was the first time that I had to be um, partnered with Netflix and the producers that they used and I had to be collaborative um, to put out a collaborative effort. It was the second time that we did that, yes. How does it, what's the different process? I would think that you would have more freedom creatively when you don't have to partner. How was that working relationship? I'm curious after everything that happened with Dave Chappelle, were they, and I know you filmed it a year before, but I'm curious about their freedom and and letting you have all the license you want to say and do. Um, Okay, it's a weird situation because um, I've never been given creative license. I am the 100% owner of all things Cat Williams. I own all my masters, all my specials. I've not been sponsored or nobody put me on tour, put me under their wing. I'm not the process of a holding deal. Um, none of that. I This is all done by us, our team only. So you can't give me creative control. I had that when you met me. Yeah. Um, so 11 times I was able to do a special where we were just able to do a special good enough for you to put on the network. This meant that 
in my pursuit of trying to do the best special I possibly could that I took some of the responsibility and handed that off to others, mm. trusting how they would do it. Um, so even if I was terribly disappointed with how it went or it turned out, I wouldn't badmouth it because we all in our life have been in a relationship and we know that no relationship is perfect and um, all days are come see, come saw in real <laughs> relationships. When it's good, it's great. When it's bad, we're working on it. That's how that goes in any relationship. So um, this is no different. Um, even people in real relationships right now can think back to when they were single and what they might be doing with their schedule would be like if I was single and didn't have these kids. In the streets. But- in the streets. In the streets. <laughs> right. In the streets. Right. Hey. Yeah. So yeah. You know, my 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 job is to do things I haven't done before and to continuously to be striving to be better. Um, so if you were to tell me that my last foray was a 100 percent strikeout, I wouldn't take anything bad from it. I understand that I'm the league leader in strikeouts i yeah. just understand that i'm also the league leader in home runs hey if you understand those go together yeah. then you will understand why i'm where i'm at listen yeah you- 12 times yes. i've taken this risk yes. you know and it's a risk that in our lane as a comedian you're not guaranteed to be funny because you think you are the customer is always right so that's that's how we do business it's the I said this before to any time I've ever interviewed anybody, any comedian I've ever talked to. It's the hardest job. Yeah, it's the hardest job in the world. I could agree with you, but in, in reality, it's not really. It's the most blessed job possible. Mm. If being a, a analyst or a sports commentator is a dream job for the world, this is even better than that. At that, you're being forced to criticize because that's part of the process is being critical. This is your ability. You don't have to do any of that. You can do it exactly how it's best for you and the audience that um, is being uplifted by you. So yeah, it's a, it, it's hard, but it is so rewarding. And it's such a wonderful relationship to be in between comedian and the audience that really? is involved with that oh my goodness like understand I've literally been in this conversation with this group since 1995 and every time I just come out with hey this is how I feel and this is what's going on and this is how I see and to have a relationship where there's been great communication for 20 years who who could say that like well you it's impossible it's impossible to have a great relationship for 20 years. That's impossible. People change and don't that's like what you. I'm saying. It's impossible. So that you're right. doing something that's rare. R- right. And I'm saying, so however it goes, like I, I I can't cry about a missed shot because I didn't allow myself to get as excited as I would have been about the made shot. Like This is not about highs or lows. This is the search for balance at all times. So um, even as an artist, you have to understand that our job is just to put out the work. Correct. The content. You, it's interesting because I believe comedians are the great observers of the war, the world. Like you observe the world and whatever your lens is. And, And I read in our research that you have met Prince at a young age and you thought he was a higher thinker and that changed the way you you moved. Tell me about that. When you met him and what was it that had that, whatever it is, if it was a Genesee choir, whatever you understood how he connected with you, how did that change for you? How did that change you? Um, I, I, I've really just had a, a really blessed existence like I've been blessed to know life um changing people um John Witherspoon and Heavy D and Charlie Murphy and there's just a cavalcade of people that I've been blessed to be able to know and knew at an early age Prince was the first famous person that I met um in my lifetime 
and I didn't under I didn't know him or his music or any of that, but um, he taught me the um, link between what you do as art and the preservation of your actual self. So the fact that he was able to do complete works for others while still working on his own complete works. The fact that he was doing more stay in the time, vanity, Apollonia, and his, all that. The, the fact that regardless of whether you liked how he looked in his hair or dress yeah. or posture yeah. or presentation, you had to agree that you had not seen it before and you had never seen it done the way he was doing it. And he held himself to the type of standard that you pay people for. You pay people to hold you to a standard where you can be a professional in all ways, shapes and forms. I watched the guy go for 10 years partying. I watched him 10 years not drinking or doing nothing, no caffeine. I watched him be a Jehovah Witness. I watched, I watched all of the different things. Um, he shared all of that with me and he was just a brilliant thinker and a person who really understood um, the value of women on the planet and the value of the feminine. And he um, understood that if your mother is a woman and your father is a man, then you're mixed. I don't know what, okay, I gotta go back. You called him a brilliant thinker. What makes yeah, him subjectively, because sure. it's your opinion, but people definitely agree with you. What makes him a brilliant thinker? How does he see the world differently from anyone else? How does he value women, as you mentioned, more so okay. than anyone That's else? That's separate. That's okay. separate. But, but the first part of it is um, all of his moves were planned out 10 years in advance at mm. all times. I knew him from when he was, when I was 12 to um when he ascended so that's what was our discussion our friendship was based upon the fact that there were three or four things that he really valued my opinion on and there were 10 things that I, I valued his opinion on everything but there were certain things that he trusted my opinion on um and so that was always a connection between ours is Prince never believed um, that anybody owned information or knowledge. And so if he needed to know something, he just wanted to know whoever was the smartest person about that. He always just wanted to meet who was the best. If he was looking for a girlfriend, he didn't care who she was. He cared if he thought she was the most beautiful woman on uh -huh. the planet. Uh -huh. And that's who he wanted. And he was able to let that fluctuate. He, he appreciated and valued the arts. You can't play 26 instruments and not be above the rest of us in thinking process. Whoa. Okay. So true artist. And you're right about how, what he saw. His stories are legendary. And I think whenever I meet someone who knew him in an intimate way, I'm always fascinated. I have, I am fascinated by the group of people in which he decided to commune with. He gave an audience to, and he enjoyed. I am not surprised that you are, you guys were close friends. It makes sense on how he moved and he moved so stealth. Like it wasn't loud. It was really quiet. It was the opposite of someone as famous as he is. Yeah. And, what and every single thing, when you found out about it, he, it was already done. Done. He's like, I've been there. And he and I will work on things for four years and then they just wouldn't happen. But we would know why they didn't happen. Yeah. It, I'm the one that met, that had him start selling his albums himself because as a comedian, I put out an album and I, I got the distribution and paid for that and had the barcodes on all of my music. And I gave a copy to everybody who bought my tickets for the tour. And so I sold 2 million copies of the record 
and was on Billboard. And when he found out, he was like, how is that even possible? You don't even have a record deal. And I showed him how it happened. And that's why he refused to ever sell that music through anybody other than himself after that. Is that so when my, he changed his name left. to Symbol? Is that are you? Are you telling me? No, you this, no this is this is when he's doing Crystal Ball. Okay. And now he's only selling things through MPG. And he's not letting his music be sold by a record label or company or entity. Wait, so yeah. you're very instrumental in how he's moving his music in society. He asked you how you did it and he followed the plan? I am instrumental in all the relationships that I'm in. And all, right. all the relationships that I'm in, those people are instrumental in myself. I told Steph Curry to shoot from out there because he had the ability because I was paying him $5,000 for celebrity basketball games. And I'm telling him, do you understand that they don't even set the defense until you get to the three point line? Uh -huh. So if you will agree to shoot before you get there, they don't even have a defense, have a defense to set, set up again. You'll just be the greatest shooter that ever lived. I told Tyron Lou to go into teaching. I have, I'm blessed to have had relationships where I'm able to be valuable and I'm useful because of a certain skill set. Like we all trust the doctor because he went to school eight years more than us. Mm -hmm. But if he's in the kitchen, <laughs> he needs to shut up in the kitchen. He's not a chef. On the plane, he has to shut up. He's not the pilot. You, you, a doctor is only good in the hospital scenario. Um, so, you know, we're all just good at what we study. And um, I just have studied people for 40 years. So you, having said that, I'm thinking about the special, especially from last night. And there are things yeah. that I'm like, oh, I, I have to ask him about this because either it went over my yeah. head or it, it, I didn't, I didn't know where you were going with it. And we, yeah. we can curse and we can do whatever on here and they can clean it up. So a pussy is like a fax Absolutely. machine. Why is pussy yeah. like a fax machine? Um, because um, if when you fuck her, she makes a copy of you. Continue. So a fax machine is taking an original image and then making copies of this image preserving this image is copy and if I make 10 of them at some point they won't look as close to this but this process is a mechanical process and this this is a process that is existing and everything is predicated on this. Like there, we live in a society where we get a chance to decide whether women get rights or, or decide how oh, much shit. a woman should decide about her. But everybody on this planet came from a woman. It's the one discussion we cannot be in. Like, Correct. If, the alien, if the aliens come to this planet and they say, who created everybody on this planet? Until they meet God, the answer is the woman. Correct. Which is why in everybody's religious books, the woman is the end all be all of all things. Even if it's Adam and Eve, or if it's hey, us, God and the devil got in a fight and Satan got thrown down here. Okay, so Satan and the demons came down to the earth and they could have had anything on the earth, but all they wanted was pussy. Mm. And nobody's book says they wanted anything other than that. There was never any stories of diamonds or gold or oil or anything being valuable to anybody supernatural except women. They saw women made bodies and then had sex with them. And that's all it says. You have to understand the importance of that as a commodity in your mm -hmm. world. It, it's bigger than the act of the enjoyable sex. It's the fact that you come from there. So a society that's having a struggle, figuring out who's on top and who's on the bottom and who should have the most rights and who shouldn't, and that, that's a bad recipe. So that joke is about the importance of the vagina. Like we would, all, we would have to have 
everybody who has a business that sells eggs or omelets is having to deal with the fact that the cost of eggs is now extraordinary and it used to not be correct and you were paying you were paying forty dollars for a case and now you're paying 120 dollars for a case but you can't raise the price on an omelet because you're already at the maximum price for two scrambled eggs <laughs> and you'd lose your customers pass on the, you see what i'm saying yes what i'm saying is never never can the most valuable thing be taken for granted amen that's what that joke is is amen. the fax machine Amen. Amen. That's it fine. is, it is the most valuable thing. I don't think women even understand yes. that sometimes you, if for you to say that, and for me to be a woman and ask you to explain that talks about sometimes how they don't understand the value in that. But once they do, right. it turns it into a whole nother game. Like once you understand its value, it changes everything. But, but they've always known the value. That's why they made sure that every woman represented in the Bible was either a whore or a reformed whore. Mm. Tell me about that. Why do you think that was in the Bible? Whore because in a male-driven society, there's no way that we can let women be uplifted or that's the end Correct. of that discussion. Correct. Correct. And they have to make sure they try to, try to anyway, keep us down. It, it is necessary that it be done. We don't have to get into how many religions don't let women talk. Well, we're in a society right now. You mentioned it very casually, but Roe versus Wade, everything's on the fucking table. If they are if they are overturning Roe things, versus things Wade. That, things that aren't allowed to be on the table. They're not even allowed to be on the table. Correct. There isn't a person qualified to take a woman's right on this planet. Correct. There isn't, what? there isn't a woman, there isn't a person that's qualified to call it into question only because no one has ever questioned a man's right because who would do it? And, and <laughs> if they did, it wouldn't even be, if a man could give birth, this wouldn't even be a fucking question. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. How's a man, man going to tell me about something he's never done before ever and what it should be and what it shouldn't be. This shit's crazy. As, I, it's as crazy. soon as men are in charge of contraception, that will be the end of civilization because there's not mm -hmm. going to be any more babies. That's the end of that. It is a wrap. So what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is not be funny in these specials. I'm trying to ha have a conversation that's not being had, and I'm really sorry that these conversations are being had by a comedian. I wish too that it was a religious leader of some kind having this conversation, or somebody's politician talking about this stuff. I'm. I'm talking about legalizing weed 10 years before it happens Correct. and going to jail for it in every city and state while having my doctor's prescription. And nobody cares that I'm going to jail. They just assume I must have be doing something to get me there. And they don't even care if I get out because they just assume, I guess he must have paid them off. Like, it, it's crazy what we allow in a society that we uh, 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 say is free. Um, even if we believe that Roe versus Wade was a problem, we vote on everything in this country. We 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 vote on the PTA. We vote at the city council level. When when did anybody vote on this stupid, unpopular thing? No, they they don't. Never. It's not even left. It's it's. It's just because they need to do things that have never been done before. In order to do that, you need to do some stuff that's never been done before. Oftentimes we look for our comedians, I do anyway, to give us a perspective about society that we don't, that we have taken for granted. And I know while there may be humor injected in it, it's always a sobering story of where we are. Like comedians for me, really good ones really are able to take what's going on in society and say, this is what it is, make it palpable, make it digestible. And so you, you do exactly that. That's exactly what the sports commentator does. That's Correct. what the analyst does. They're Correct. They, they're not, we at home are already given our opinion about the game as it's happening in mm -hmm. real time. What yeah. we're missing is the facts and the eloquence, the articulation. This is true. And the information <laughs> and analysis to be able to do it, or we would all be doing it at Correct. the house. Correct. We're at well, the house you... going, wait a minute. <laughs> that, that ain't been done since uh, 
<laughs> the analyst walks us through this Ooh, we correct. trust you correct. that's how you are able to be one of two black women in your lane in the course of 50 years right you're, accepted by you're the so people right. and accepted by the people that pay like it's the same thing like we are being trusted because of something and it's our job to maintain that as much as we can I feel like when you you talk, you there are just there are a handful that have that. Oh, I'm paying attention. What did he say? That is a beautiful thing. What it? I don't know if you view it the way I do. I don't have any pressure being a black woman in sports. I feel like when I first started, it was me just finding my way and trying to make sure that I could get respect in a place where there was no respectability for women, especially black women. Um, and then if you do the work, it eventually pays off. If you do the work, it pays off. I, you know, my rookie season, I do all the work. It pays off. I think that was true. If that was true, no NBA player would play another game until the WNBA players get a real salary. And they wouldn't do, but they won't do that. Men. Okay. So, 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 so are you saying that, tell me why you say if that were true, how about that? Because clearly it's not. It's not, it's not true, but there are, there are these ideas, right? That women, I'm just talking about from experience. They don't know. I'm not going to get into that because it's clearly not true. You're right. It's stupid. But when you say something, right. And you make a, and you really bring something that's very sad, but very true. For instance, last night you talk about, we got weekend at Bernie's and, and every moment you talk about Biden, you're like, he 96, he 97, he 97. And he's not going to answer the fucking questions. He never answers it right. I look at that and it makes me laugh because it's like, this is so true. Yes, I know listening to this man, President Biden, I don't know what he's talking about. He forgets thoughts. He's saying the wrong thing. Everyone says, and his camp says he's lucid and aware. He is not. What are our options when we're sitting there watching this man talk? We don't have our options. I'm, I, I look at the way you described our country last night and I'm like, we fucked. Correct? Like, <laughs> I'm sure. Like we're fucked. We got a 99 year old man and, and I don't see anybody who could beat Trump. And so you make this joke and I'm wondering if it's really resonating with the people that I think it should resonate with. Your audience should be up in arms about this, even though we're laughing and joking about it, we should not be distracted. Right, but they are professionals at propaganda on both sides, and so that's how it's done. So the reason the joke is set up that way is because um, if I say something complimentary about Joe Biden, that makes me on the left. And if I say something against Joe Biden, that will make me on the right. My job is neither. My job as a public official is to be in the middle. What I'm saying is as ridiculous as what we just experienced, is this not equally? Equally so ridiculous. Whole thing about, <laughs> right. See, the thing about Weekend at Bernie's is not the fact if the movie is an old reference, but if you know the reference, you understand that the man who is Bernie is deceased. You're looking at his movements as if this is a real creature. This is not. He is propped up and supported by this agenda. And this agenda is who you see. Answering 100%. the questions, making the moves and the decisions that this is a puppetary figure. And so I, as a comedian, have to go the opposite way. Now, yes, I hope that you get it on either side, that it's this system. We don't. We have a system. We would never let um, a retired basketball player um, win MVP for the league. No, you didn't ever. play. You're not right. You're, he didn't play. No, no. He, right. You you're not old. You're not right. So the fact that this is the only place that we decide that we're going to hire the elderly is not. Um, the way that anyone does business anywhere in the country. There, if you can show me the 70-year-old CEO of a Fortune 500 company, then I'll have a conversation. The United States is the top of that. So it doesn't do us any more service to have someone who is negligent 
than it did for us to have an erratic maniac in there. Say that again. There's still no accountability. Say that again. So my job is I'm trying to take a terrible, unpleasant, un unlikable position and say it, hope it's funny. But if it gets discussed and it's not funny, I'll win. If it's funny and don't right. get discussed, I win. But what I really want is this conversation is supposed to be happening about all of this. So that's that's what I, the experience I've tried to make my stand up into, but it requires me not to be on a side essentially. That's hard to do because I feel like all of us are subjective and we all have our own unconscious bias and our regular bold ass bias. So to be able to talk about yeah. either side is that's tough to do and try to be neutral, right? Because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not. I, I'm, I've, I've given yeah. that up. I'm, I, I am. No, 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 you are neutral. Um, you I are love my biased. Lakers. Um, I love my Lakers. You're biased. No, oh, ma'am, you're biased to champions. Yes, exactly. I only want to win. <laughs> you only care about those that win or are in the pursuit of winning. Um, that There is that bias, but that doesn't affect how you do business. No. And we don't pick up bias from you. Um, we, we, we have the expectation for everybody on the news that they're being unbiased. But sure. we can tell that they're not. We understand they're just reading the teleprompter. Correct. Correct. You got if the you think it, it, Never in our life have we seen somebody get charged with a crime and then see that crime get lessened for them. We for watched sure. a guy with a gun and a knife tackle Dave Chappelle live while assaulting them. That's already a felony in California for the fake gun, Correct. a felony for the knife, then a, a felony for the assault. We watched three felonies get turned into a misdemeanor because we're trying to make it where it's okay for people to respond if they don't like something. That's how the Will okay. Smith, Chris Rock thing happens. Mm -hmm. That's how I get a gun put on me for telling a joke and that guy doesn't go to jail and nothing happens and there's no hubbub. Things, things are changing at all times. And so we have to understand that and make our moves accordingly. I must ask, because we are talking about it. I remember after the Will Smith slap incident in Chris Rock, I mean, after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, uh, comedians were like, it's crazy. Y'all don't understand how tough it is for us out here. This is ridiculous. This happens all the time. I remember not feeling like I was aware of comedians' lives being threatened or in danger. So you just say you had a gun put to your head. We watch what happens with... Um, Dave Chappelle and the guy rushes the stage, got his ass beat, rightfully so. Nope. Is Getting your ass beat has never given you leniency with the law. If I ever. robbed the bank and while in the process of me robbing the bank, I drop the gun and everybody in the bank whoops my ass. Does that lessen my charges? No, tomorrow? you know, no, you go into jail. You did what you, it no. doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Those things happen. Those things happen when somebody benefits from those things happening. And that's the only time you see those things happen. And they can tell you whatever story they want to. They tell you a story where, well, the police asked, did anybody want them to be arrested? And they didn't know. And then the police asked the victim and uh, he said, no. <laughs> and so then the police just didn't arrest him. Is that how the police work? Have we ever heard of anything no. like that in our no. lifetime? Of course not. <laughs> So, <laughs> so Will Smith, Chris Rock, you watch that. What do you think? How do you digest it? I am in the production business. I understand what is worth doing for ratings. I understand what is worth doing when the industry is canceling one black guy. I know what happens when they are going to elevate another. And I know what happens when they don't care about either of them. Um, this is how quarterbacking go. So the question is, hey, your quarterback just got sacked. Did we know we was fin to sack your quarterback? We absolutely did. It was a play, buddy. We've been rehearsing it, working it out, making sure that at some point when you get to this level, we can make sure we knock you from a $20 million man to putting in the news that people won't hire you no more and your career is done. Yeah. 
So you said it was a setup. You're going to do all of that. You said it was. I'm a... saying that everything that I'm saying that everything that happens in a business that's based off of pretend that seems like a setup is. Everybody that happens in a benefits. business, everything that happens in a business that seems that's based off of pretend that seems like a setup yes. is. Yes. What I'm saying is if Jesse Smollett and Lee Daniels for a living make stories that are not real and they make them so good that people believe them and buy them and that that's what business they're in. Why would you think it would be weird if they flipped out and said a story that turned out to not be true? Why? Why would we think that if they are capable they just, of doing that for a living? That's what they do for a living. They do that 300 episodes is take something fictitious and make it seem real that's the business why would you i don't think, understand that but i don't think will was there's pretending. not very many mistakes i don't think, I don't will, don't think will was will pretending, was pretending in that either moment. i thought he was having a nervous breakdown okay in front of us well here's the thing uh for will to be having a nervous breakdown for it to affect him like that this is collaborative so for when Will Smith speaks, Will Smith is not the giant that he is solely on the merits of Will Smith or his family. Um, there are 300 corporations that are a part of the Will Smith business operation. That is the $20 million a movie mega thing that Will Smith represents. And if you are the people that are in business with him. When you decide that you gonna do something, you can do it too. So these circumstances are not, um, we, we see them as, oh, this is live. He said something about his wife and then he got mad and jeopardized his career. And then the other guy had to decide what he was gonna do with his career. And then he, no, we have to understand that these are two giants in our field if you're a black person. Correct. This is two guys too big and too good to be involved in what they're in. That would make sense if it's me and Michael Blackson slapping each other. <laughs> not, not, not Will Smith and Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. they, these are when two large boulders come together and you can't see Chris Rock winning at all. He's humiliated. If you were going to slap a comedian, he was the number one to slap, head of the coons, so slappable. And if you're going to slap him, you just need the greatest guy, the bestest guy, the one who's shown us him being on his best behavior since the 90s. That guy is the one that would have to slap him in order for the type of ratings we need and attention to be on this thing. See, what I'm saying is in business, nothing is coincidental or you will be hearing who's losing money. In all of these situations, it's only the artist that's losing. Somebody makes big money. When these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made $100 million and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew, don't have to validate none of their contracts. Wow. Now only got to deal with the mama. Only got to wow. see her once a year and it's over and the money goes up and up and up. So they killed this $20 million guy, but they reached 60 million in benefits. Wow. And they had some people from your city do it. <laughs> wow. I'm saying there, there's the good side and the bad side of, of, of these businesses. And But That's think about what is, you I just, guess. just think about what you just said. That's extremely thoughtful and powerful. It could only be what it was if it were those two. Those two, yes. Will Smith and Chris Rock. It could only be what it has been yes. with those particular, those two Black men. If, if you put any other names together, um, the police are out on stage. They've cut to commercial. You didn't see what happened. By the time they come out, people have been removed. It goes on. It in certain ways, things are handled when it's not intentional. When things go smoothly, but they seem chaotic, that means there was forethought and a plan. Somebody, mm -hmm. even if it looks like, yeah, Jenny Jackson just had a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, there's no such thing. Correct. I don't care who you blame. 
I believe I believe that. I believe that. Somebody benefited. Yeah. So in all of these situations, there's a business involved and there's real money involved and somebody's benefiting from this thing that looks like, oh, that just happened. Nah, no way. No way. It, uh, it would be hard for a homeless guy to get into the Hollywood Bowl, let alone a homeless guy be able to rush the stage and actually. So you're saying same for Dave Chappelle and this random homeless person. I Man, thought the same thing. I'm saying? like, how did he rush the stage? I've been to Hollywood Bowl. How do you rush the stage? Look, look, look. This is the business. We're in the business where make believe happens. Where the job is to have something that costs nine cents for us to make. And we sell it for $4.99 to you for a good deal. And it's okay that it costs us nine cents. But in, in, the, in this business, the star is the commodity. These are real people, real lives. When things you see things happen and you don't have all of the information, the true tragedy is what Jada Pinkett Smith is having to go through in that scenario, considering if at most you can say maybe she disappointed Will. Other than that, she has upheld Black women, actresses. She, we've never been embarrassed of Jada Pinkett Smith. She always worked hard for every role and worked hard in it. She always was willing to give us every. She's being successful through, she didn't get made by Will Smith. <laughs> Regardless of what you think about her relationship, that's not your relationship. If it's an open relationship, understand that means him and men, not you think about it wrong. It's okay. These things matter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, I'm ready. You, you, in, you giving the inside inside because, because Hollywood know that, right? That's not new. However, I love for you talking about Jada, how people <clears throat> have tried to vilify her especially after her quote unquote entanglement, I think it's so disrespectful. I, I, I think she has been nothing but class personified. And you know what I'm saying? Like she could no, as a black. No, she's been more than that. More than that. more than that. And I don't like how she's getting such a bad rap. Because I was like, this is, that's not what this is. When um, you go on. No, there is a business where they fiddle with the perception of the people. And that's part of the job. Back in the day, it used to be called propaganda. Now it's just called business. They don't say we got to smear the candidate. They smear them. Whoever Period. made you is who is qualified to break you. That's the end of it. When they bought you and put you on that Fox show, it was because you were going to do this and only this. You'll never do that. As soon as you breached that, they done with you too. Facts. So, Facts. They had decided that they were finished with Will when he did After Earth with Jaden because there was no way they was going to let Jaden on because Jaden didn't have to do what you had to do to get in. We're not going to let you put Jaden and Will on. And from there, they've done what was necessary to take him from a $20 million a movie Correct. to put him in a position where maybe it can appear he has a nervous breakdown and now is unemployable. Oh, so you saying, oh, my man. And it's not racist. They did it with the white actors as well. They cut down Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and all of them from $20 million a movie people to left them out there to dry and restructured everything. This this is business at its highest level. At it its just highest involves level. People's lives. At its highest yeah, level. And they want you to and you can't understand that. So if someone's listening to you and, and doesn't have an understanding of, of a little small understanding of how this world works and how they build you to destroy you, they can't really get what you're saying, but it's real as hell. And I want to go back to yeah. what you said earlier about women and how important they are. And then you, and then you, and I appreciate you talking about how dope Jada is. I feel like and it's not even feel, it's true. Women don't get the credit that they deserve, especially black women in this society. We, we sit here and we fight and we're on the front lines for a lot of things. And we're told all the things we're not. And you said she's more than class personified. 
Right, but there has to be responsibility taken as well, though. Sure. Um, yes, we're yes, who, we're responsible. Whoever, no, no, no. That's not what I mean. What I mean, whatever women feel like they don't get credit for, who were they supposed to get it from? What do you mean? You birthed you birthed us as a baby. It don't then we don't get to be in charge of y'all. Mm. so the expectation that we should be understanding what you are no 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 child is misconfused misinformed or um, no no child is wondering what the relationship is between me child and mama you see what i'm saying yeah Every child instantly knows what that relationship is and what it means. And, but Kat, um, something happens between the time that you've given birth that you become an adult and you're indoctrinated by society and you feel like it's okay to, to, to repeal Roe versus Wade, right? Something happens right. in between in the society in which we live in that says that we don't matter yeah. and we're given, because it's a, it's, a, it's a patriarchy. Right. Even yeah. although we yeah. are the Absolutely. giver of life, it's still a patriarchy. It's still male dominated. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just because um, we're not equal. We're, we're not equal. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're we superior. Keep, we, <laughs> we keep trying to put the sexes on equal footing and the so sexes can't ever be on equal footing unless a man produces life out of his penis. Correct. Other than that, it's never going to be equal footing. Now, in business, um, men were thought to be um, better in business and handling business and societal things because of how great the woman was and how vast her responsibility was before she ever left her home. So the woman had already done eight jobs already uh, at this place we lived. Um, this wasn't the great mother, this was all mothers. They had got up, got the kids together, did food, taking care of everybody, ain't no money. She handling this, she doing that, she got this, the house. <laughs> it's to the point where it, it would be like, why would I want a woman to work? She do so much. Like mm. women shouldn't even be able to do nothing else. They should just, do this thing they do and make life enjoyable. And we, the guys go out and do whatever the tough, ugly, dirty, nasty sex stuff is that makes money so that we can bring that home and enjoy bliss at this house with this woman. That's what everything was set up for in the patriarchal system. It was respect first. It was we respected what the woman brought to the table so much that she shouldn't even be doing, even in the religions where they cover a woman and they'd be like, that's so disrespectful to women. It's really not. Yeah, what I get it. it, it yeah. It's really because it, it's really refusing to let you be objectified. Correct. Nobody can say she's fine as hell because they don't know. Mm -hmm. And because their religious book said that the devil came down and found you attractive and you fell for that. And then Adam and Eve, you had sex with the snake. And well, the women can't be trusted with the heart. Yeah, I, you talked so about that last night. Or you these, yeah, I'm saying these are uncomfortable conversations. 100%. Like it's it's no, 100%. No comedian, no comedian would pick these type of conversations to talk about in the first place. I could talk about having a bowel movement and be funny for 30 minutes, guarantee. I could just talk about, hey, I went to the drive-thru and this took place. I could tell those type of stories with my time and be guaranteed to be funnier than all of the peers I have. But I'm trying to have, I'm trying to curate the most impossible conversation mm -hmm. to have comedically and I try to have it so when it works well it does um, when it doesn't it doesn't but we're all in this together we all have shared experiences there are only top eight type of people on the planet and everybody else is an alien we live in a society where people don't believe in aliens but they do believe in the angels and they do believe in God and they right. do believe that 
loved ones go to heaven and they do, but they don't. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's at a time where the truth is still king. And um, sometimes you have to shame the populace into having these conversations. If it take me for me saying something stupid, like a woman's vagina is a fax machine <laughs> for a conversation <laughs> to take. Um, you talk about uncom- uncomfortable conversations. You always have them. It takes a lot of courage to do that and not even courage. Sometimes it's just in you and you don't even know that it is what it is. I, I ask you, what do you need? This is, and I'll wrap with this because, or what, or where do you find your peace? You have, I could only imagine that your mind is going and you're aware and you observe and you see and you think and you're 10 steps ahead, if not 30 steps ahead. And you're having these conversations with sometimes could appear mere mortals who don't get it. Where do you find your peace? How do you turn off, if at all possible? Okay, so um, I, I found in my whole life, all I wanted to do was be an explorer. I wanted to find out things. I found out that information and knowledge is free and that you cannot know something one second. And the very second that you know something, that's an extra thing that you know. And it's a commodity of mm. gathering information. Mm. So I found out that a lot of times when we can't get something to work, it's because we're misunderstanding the directions. We understand the directions, but we're misunderstanding them. So if you follow religion, it says, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it goes on to tell you other things. But I found out that that first part is the actual instruction. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that's the end. And so my piece is the fact that I don't want anything ever from anywhere, anybody, anything, any situation. I don't have any expectations of you them nobody are you a human i don't have an expectation of you i know how this goes you could do whatever you Mm want to do i i have no wants i have no needs who i'm connected to gives me every single thing i have ever wanted if i didn't get it i found out i wasn't supposed to have it so now i don't even want what i do want i just know if i look at something too long i'm gonna have it so when you have no wants and no needs, you can't be put in a desperate situation. You can't be pressed. You can't be under pressure. You mm. can only have peace. And um, if, if someone is listening and you want to find peace, if you can find a body of water, however long you can hold your breath under, there is peace. So if you can only mm. do 10 seconds and you can give yourself 10 seconds of peace underwater, you will find that everything you need is within access of you. you. You do not need anyone to complete you in anything or any journey. You are complete. The journey of this life is finding out that you were complete the whole time, finding mm-hmm. out that what you thought wasn't valuable was valuable, to find out that the people that were being oppressed were our most prized jewel of all people, to find out that all these people were held down and these they run everything. The world is great because of them. Uh, you open yourself up to that. It's, it's important that you understand that whatever it is you're missing in your life right now, as long as it's not money, because remember, money isn't real. It's just something that represents mm-hmm. something. So when it was cowy okay. shells, it was. When it was paper, it was. When it was coins, it was. When it was rocks, it was. Now that it's Bitcoin and it's invisible, like it does, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is you think you're missing, you can access that that it is uh, able to be accessed by humans and you are human and you Mm -hmm. are worthy and it doesn't matter what it looks like Mm -hmm. that is what makes living on this planet exciting and Mm -hmm. it is that way so there that's um that's how I get my peace that's why it's not chaotic for me I understand when I'm punching that your job is to try to punch me now I understand the rhythm of it Hey, um, man. When I punch you, I don't, I don't celebrate because I understand that the punch is coming. And that's, you know, 
That's the nature of it what it is. It keeps you healthy in your life. Yeah, I, I got taught that from being a parent because you can never be a perfect parent. You can just do the best you can and that's the end of that conversation. Because yeah, you don't so, know. You do your you. best not to fuck them up and you're like, excuse my French, you do your best not to, you know, and you're like, and that's all I have. I'm just figuring yeah. it out as we go. That's right. all I have. Right, and, and all understand that all, all of us are trying to be better than our parents we don't even know what that means is different right. circumstances like <laughs> right. there are no rule books like yeah so you know when we understand that you can control every single thing that you can control but you can't control nothing you can't control and that's Listen. the beauty of it there's nothing stopping great things from happening to you, you that's why suicide is the only thing you cannot do you can never take yourself out of the game. Don't worry. They'll cart your carcass off as soon as you expire. Mm -hmm. But we don't take ourselves out the game because as champions, we know the next game is the best game. That's it.